Hello, Legend of the Samurai here with the Kaba Ace. This is another high pin count dimple lock from Japan. I believe it's the Asian market equivalent of the Kaba Gemini. Uh, it also has three rows, left, right, and top, although the left, right rows are horizontal, whereas in the Gemini they're up at a slight angle. Uh, it can also take up to 16 pins, uh, 6, 5, and 5. This one only has 4 in the top row, so 15 total. And it uses the normal Kaba key milling to make it hard to tell where key pins are, uh, except for on the edge. So, like other Kaba locks, these are built to quite good tolerances. It can make them a little tricky to get open. Be using a snug fitting tensioner, uh, not because I need a lot of back and forth control, but because I need to put a lot of force into this to get everything to stay set. I'll be going counterclockwise, and I'll start on the right. One, two, five, three. Four, tiny bit of core rotation, so I'll switch to the other side. Six, five, one, two, three, four. Another little click on three. Okay, I think those are all set. Move up to the top. I'll switch to a hook because with this much tension, getting the top pins with a flag is rather difficult. Let's see if anything's binding. Okay, it looks like it is, but I have to be very careful not to overset things up here. There's two. One, three, four, bounce back and forth a little bit. There we go. So we are open. Uh, Kappa staggers all of their pin chambers, uh, so if I wanted to hold down all of the drivers, I could spin this, but they specifically size their drivers to fall into the keyway. Uh, so I will not do that this time. We are open, lock it back up. And now taking this lock apart is a little bit interesting. So first off, Spin that a little to get it the rest of the way. Oh no, you're going to make me drop the core out the back first. Okay, well. Move this out. Pop that off. And then I'm actually going to put this back for a moment. And I will show you why in second, because while I'm taking the plug out, uh, it is easier to hold the core in this larger body. All right, turn that way. I'll go with a small follower. All right, so 
before it all falls out the bottom, there is a ball detent mechanism. It centers the plug. And the key out of here. And we'll drop all the key pins out first. So we have five on the right, four on the top, and six on the left. One. Four. Right, that is our key pins. I'll show the plug. So nothing unusual here. One step of uh, constriction to keep the T pins from falling into the plug. There's where that ball detent lives. No warding to speak of. And then as for key pins, most of them are pretty normal. Kappa pins. Uh, there are two of these deeply spooled key pins, and then there is one of the, I believe they call them blocker pins. They are flat on the top, and they sit almost all the way across the keyway, and they require this ramp on the end of the key uh, to have the key lift them up. So getting under that can be a trick. Now. I'm going to show you a very unconventional gutting technique that I do not recommend you try unless you are certain it will work for your lock. Uh, the fainted heart may wish to look away. I was very confused the first time I took this lock apart because I couldn't get the drivers to come out. Because they're retained. They just stay in there. So now if we pop the core back, the only way to get them out is to undo a bit of a crimp right here and then to pull this sleeve off the outside. So set up with a little external follower sleeve to hopefully keep springs from going absolutely everywhere uh, because they use gigantic springs. So there is our sleeve. And now here is our housing with all of our springs and all of our drivers intact, and I will attempt to get them out in an orderly fashion. A couple of tricks to try and do that. So one is to use a shim to keep them from springing absolutely everywhere. as we rotate the sleeve. Eh. 
Could have been worse. And there they go. Okay, so that's one. And I have no idea why they do this, but they have two of these absolutely tiny springs mixed in here, and they do not correspond with a given bidding height. There are identically uh, bitted positions, some of them with the long spring, some of them with the short spring. All right, now to get the drivers out, we are on the right side. And sometimes they do not want to come out. Yeah, so these drivers are in fact T-pins with a hollow at the top. Some of them are quite short. Last round.
very short ones do not like to come out on their own. All right, there's all our drivers out. So if you can see, there is indeed a step down in the bottom of all of the chambers that prevents those drivers from falling through. Uh, I have never seen another lock do this, including other cabas. I don't know why they chose to do it that way, but that is what I found. Go close on these. Uh, all of the drivers are standard, apart from the fact that they're T-pins and retained, but that doesn't affect picking. Uh, and then the key pins, two of them, uh, there and there, are the sort that will trap oversets if you let them. Uh, the rest of them will also overset, but they won't uh, spool over. So if you ever get a false set in this lock uh, and you get counter-rotation out of it, that's bad. That's, that's being trapped in one of these spooled sections. So in that case, you want to drop things back and start anew. Uh, they pick similar to most of the other kappas. You need to find your binding order, otherwise you'll be dropping everything all the time. Uh, but other than that, if you apply moderate to heavy tension, uh, you can keep things set and then you just work your way through the binding order. Uh, avoid oversets, and then you'll have it open. So, there we go. That is the Kaba Ace. Picked and gutted. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.